In 2003, an entrepreneur and owner of Find Me A Star Limited, an online casting database, joined a self-styled film producer who had bought the rights to a book, The Governor, based on the life of an East End hard man, Lenny McLean. Together, they set up Film Idol to search the UK for 86 unknowns to cast in the film of the book. her question. You may think that the many TV talent searches are the first of a kind. We are here in, in fact, the first star search was in 1938. Film producer David O. Selznick asked publicity guru Russell Birdwell to find an actress to play Scarlett O'Hara for the blockbuster Gone with the Wind. After many months and a worldwide search, Vivian Lee was finally chosen. Will this modern day talent search find any new stars? This is Patrick Barber, owner of Find Me A Star Limited. The search is on. Phil Idol. Thank you very much for coming, ladies and gentlemen and children, mums and dads we've got any. My name's Clinton Montague, you don't know who I am. I'm the producer of The Governor, which is going to be a blockbuster of film, done 2004. I bought the rights to a number one best-selling book, okay? came down to the wire to the producers of The Lobstock and Two Smoking Barrels and myself. I put in a blind bid, I wrote out a big cheque, and I promised to make a hard hitting traditional British film based on the true life story of Lenny McLean, the hardest man in Britain. This film will deliver every ingredient life has to offer as far as I'm concerned. I've waited a long time to bring this together. Okay, I've raised the money, the money's in the bank, and now I'm going to cast the film. So, with the film producer's confirmation that the money is in the bank and an expert team, they are ready to go. There were 30 nighttime presentations and premiere star parties, and then the next day, they were followed with a daytime presentation for those who weren't old enough to come to the nightclubs. This was not about the 18 and overs. This was about everybody in the UK being able to have an opportunity to be part of a film. This is Nathan Merry, also known as Cream, Britain's number one warm-up man. The rest of the team are the dedicated Andy Miller, who helps run promotions at the clubs that they are to visit, the ever personable Peter Gerrard, the author of the book The Governor. The expert team of talent spotters include Mark, P. 
Peter, talent spotter, taxi driver, and all-round nice guy. Mark, the team's foot fetishist and sound man. And Neil, the boom operator and would-be presenter. Right, it's time to go to the road shows. We are at the works, Kingston. This is the launch party for Filmite. VIP party tonight. It's the first night of the road shows for four months that we're doing. We're doing a nationwide search for talent and we hope the place is going to be rammed with all the talent we've invited and we've seen all over Kingston and the surrounding towns. Here we are live at Kingston, y'all. Peter Gerard. And if it wasn't for Peter Gerard, none of this would happen today because without a book on Lady McLean, there never would have been a script, there'd never be a film. So it's all down to Peter Gerard. I hate you. <laughs> So that was quite a party, but there is a long tour ahead. Uh, the back room's locked up, so we can't, we haven't access to any lights or half hour equipment. Uh, the flight team aren't here, none of the producers are here. Uh, I'm guessing they stayed a little bit late last night and uh, got rather a bit pissed. We're just running a little bit late, I'm afraid. Um, have you got, have you all one of these? During the tour, Patrick was responsible for the nighttime presentations, with Clinton running the daytime road shows. The final auditions would take place at the end of the tour in October 2003 at Equinox in London's Leicester Square. I'm on tour with Film Idol. Okay, I've formatted Film Idol to fit the casting of the governor. It's being held as the people's film. I'd like people to register themselves on filmidol.com. Okay, if you want to take part in my film. Whether you're famous, whether you're a celebrity, Ideal, I am expressing or not, as the case may be. I'm looking for naturals. If you can act naturally, you can naturally act. That's my logo, and I've copyrighted it. I went to one of the road shows at Croydon for my brother. Um, I was standing right at the back, didn't want to get recognised, and Peter came over to me and said that there was a good part I could play. It's just the tart of the bar. Yeah, you see that. That's Francine. And that's what I do best. <laughs> it comes naturally. I haven't got to act that. <laughs> Isn't that with you? He's standing here with me. He certainly found someone to act naturally. And I say he's fucking standing here with me. But could she be his Scarlett O'Hara? Film Idol generated a lot of interest in the press, and with two publicity companies working for the search, many celebrities signed up to the database, all keen to audition for a part in the film. I'm looking for 86 characters to star in my film, okay? From the lead right down through the barman, the nurse, the taxi driver, you name it, okay? And with all due respect to people that have spent years in acting school, drama school, and so on, I don't need an actor to play the taxi driver in my film. I need a bloke who can drive a taxi, okay? Um, and so you get my drift of what the type of people we're looking for. We're looking for naturals, people that can act naturally. All right, then. No, oh, fucking hell. Fucking hell, we're two. Bart. I see. Lovely. Bit as quick as that, lovely. I see it, you come in, and we film your shooting off. For all you trained actors out there, don't worry, there will still be jobs for you too. Okay, we've done our research on what we're doing, and we've gone back as far as 1938 when they did a search for Scarlet. Okay, and Vivian Lee was given the part, okay, Scarlett O'Hara. 
Okay, Howard Hughes, famous billionaire and filmmaker, he was making a film called The Outlaw, and he went to uh, Russell Burwell, the um, publicist on Gone with the Wind, and he employed him to do the same search again, and they discovered Jane Russell to be the major star in The Outlaw. Where have you been? I was expecting you hours ago. Why didn't you phone? Why didn't you phone? I've been worried sick. And why are you walking like that? Because I've been fucking shot up the arse, that's why. Oh, God, Len. I can't take much more of this. One of these days, I'm going to get a call telling me you're dead. And then what will I do? If it's never going to end, I'm going to have to leave and take Jamie and Kelly with me. And you know I don't want that. It's no good for me. And here's his Jane Russell now. And it's no good for the kids. As it were, you busy going? Busy, but... but... Would love to do this. Okay. Would really love to do this. Would would yeah, absolutely. I did when Victoria mentioned your name. I did recommend you come and read this part. That's brilliant. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. I've got a photo card with me, but you can keep that one because I was told to bring a card, a photo card. So yeah, I'll sign it. I'll sign that one. Oh, that was slender tone. Oh, no. With an autograph in his pocket, the team head off to Brighton. The reason for the camera is we're making a documentary, OK? Um, not only of my journey, of putting the film together as an independent producer, um, but the story of real people um, making a film about real people. I mean, this isn't the first time that the story of Lenny McLean, you know, was going to be done. No, um, no. And the other one fell down because of funding. Not this time. The money's in the bank. Funding and... Getting the right people to be in it. Right. You right. know, I've been involved with the project quite a long time. Right. And uh, I know all the reasons. So, oh, OK. <laughs> but, uh, you know, two full starts, third sure. time lucky. What sort of parts have you gone for? Um, different bits. Different, yeah. yeah. He always gets to that. I got to the last stage of Harry Potter. I knew you were going to say that. And how do you feel when you don't get through? It's just like a bit of... Let down. So you stick at it. Okay, Watch out for this young hopeful at the auditions. That's bright and over and done with. Some good, some bad. Here's a prime okay. example of what the British do when a camera is pointed at them. <laughs> well, if you've got it, flaunt it. James, why have you come to do it? Well, I, I got selected to do, to, to do the uh, to do the uh, streaker. I didn't. Uh, didn't apply for that particular part, but I'm here now, so... Yeah, we, ch we sort of changed the title to Victim, because it's actually quite... Uh, it, they'll explain to you there's quite a sad side to it, because the guy actually dies. Yeah, I, I read that. But you get a bit of everything, you get to streak and you get to die, so... Excellent. What better role can you get? Oh, in all good day. Yeah, come with us. Come here, that. <laughs> and have you done any streaking before? Um, only on a Friday night or whatever, if I'm out and about with my mates. But... Oh, you, you have done some before? Well... Yeah. A little no, bit of... Nothing uh, professionally like this, though. You right, sir? I don't know. Some, some big bloke's beat me up in there. No. Can I make a complaint? Complain? No, I... Uh... Yeah, I will do. Okay, thank you. Excellent. Thanks, guys. Yeah, Thanks for your time. Next, we're off to creation in Cardiff. OK, right, tonight's fairly easy then, as far as run of events. Yeah. Tomorrow. Tomorrow, right. Um, anywhere on the way in. What I was going to suggest was, we're going to have a look at the bar. The film producer comes tomorrow with the Peter Jared who's bug for the book and script writer and some of the casting people. Yeah. And it's more of a sort of, this is why we're doing it, this is why, what questions have you got? But we've actually flied last weekend, last night, They've been out today flying because all the shoppers in town today. Perfect. They're flying with it tonight. And to be honest, actually 5,000 flies come. Oh, excellent. That's good. Well, fingers crossed. DJs have all got the scripts because there's three yeah. DJs on tonight down here. Now, this is an organised club. Intimidation. 
I mean, it's one thing to come along here today and sit yes. and relax and have a chat. And then suddenly they say, right, you have to come for an audition yeah. in front of... And suddenly it's... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm washing my hair that day. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? You don't know how you're going to react when it actually happens, you know? You might stand up there and be brilliant, or you might just, just choke. For the auditions, men, women and children travelled from all over the country. And with them, they brought their hopes and dreams of stardom. And what part are you going for today? I'm um, Young Lorraine and Young Glinda. And where do you come from? Birmingham. Long way, Yeah. And how have you been preparing for your part then? Um, I've just been listening to EastEnders, trying to get the Cockney accent and stuff. Uh, what we're going to do, we're going to spend them, um, because we staggered the day with people, for the roles 20, 11, 10, 8, 9 and 25. They should be children's roles. With the children, what we'd like to do now is actually take you through, have a look at the set and everything like that, just so that when you come through, you know what to expect, just so it sort of calms the nerves and everything like that. They need work. I mean, they're, they're nervous, they're shy, but they're great potential. This is a film about a big guy that murdered people, that killed and beat them up, like did bank robberies. Yeah, get your kid in this film. <laughs> ah, and here's our young hopeful from Brighton. Oi, right, who's that fat guy over there? Um, he's the daddy. Hey, daddy. You know, like the boss of everyone. And please don't call me Rubber. You know, my name's Johnny. Guys, <laughs> name is Guys Carol. Another night and another venue for Patrick. Yeah, we're going to try and work at the club a little bit more. With, so you remember in like Equinox? Yeah. And it all sort of like went about. Going around little pockets. Yeah, yeah, yeah we're, we're all, we're, we're all going for walks it's around and stuff. We're all meeting and greeting people. When you're using a computer database via the internet, you want to put a face to the technology. The next day, Clinton arrives for a daytime road show in the company's luxury saloon. I've heard a vicious rumor that we can't get in the club. Give everybody the directions. So we've fly team Rochester, and First Leisure, and Amadeus have decided not to allow us to do our road shows. Phil Mighty. I'm just phoning Andy Miller at um, First Leisure to see if we can get hold of anybody to get us, let us in the club. We're still outside Amadeus in Rochester. Quite a few people turning up. We're talking to them in the street at the moment, which is uh, not uh, totally convenient. Yeah. I've got my fucking club to do the road show. How am I supposed to interview people like this? It's a shambles. No one knew about it. Well, it's not down to me. Oh, I don't know who had to sort it. Who had to sort well, it? Who's, who's supposed well, to be sorting it? It's all our it, responsibility, but you know, Patrick was organising that with Andy Miller. So whose responsibility was it? Oh, I'm speechless, James. <laughs> <laughs> what do you want me to say? Let's go home and have a roast dinner. They can check on filmmodel.com. They can register there. See you later. <laughs> Let's do that. Bye for now. things so we've got to make sure keep your money in your fucking pocket yeah. because this is going to cost us somewhere the superstar warm-up cream has used his connections to take the team on a night out
Maybe Cream will get his talent out for us. We're not allowed to film the clientele, though. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I'm not going to say want to be here. That's why I'm not going in. <laughs> no. Can you wait outside, Patrick, for us? Yeah, I'll wait here. Right, OK. No, give him the film. We've got kids out of Spearmint Rhinos because Cream decided to take the camera shot inside. We've got to slung out the burger path. Hey! It's filming your beautiful We can see it all from here. It's very cool. We'll love to be on the video one. Hey! Thank you! I love you. Yeah. <laughs> well, there's a possible candidate for some blowjob in the back room. Really. Right. Oh shit, sorry, I'm here for film right now. <laughs> That's okay, we have cameras, we'll travel. I have whole talk to <laughs> The elusive Andy Miller turns up to lend the film idol tour some support. Clinton inspects the hopefuls closely. He knows exactly what he's looking for. Looking for hidden talent. Oh dear, and here's her boyfriend now. Surely no fisticuffs. Now Clinton's realized it's not an audition. He looks for security. say for the heavies, put you all in one room. Whoever's standing at the end of it, whoever's standing at the end of it, you got it. Lawrence Delalio, heavy number one. What about this again? It's not what you can do for us. It's more what we can do for you. Word has it, you've been shooting your mouth off about fixed fights. What do you think? My boss is a Charlie Hanson. They are very smart. And it's sort of like, when you think the sort of job you've got to do, it's sort of like whether it's sort of in people's mind to have that sort of 60s throwback look, a cray look with a suit, and like, because it does work. It actually does intimidate people. They don't understand the heavy stroke suit sort of look. So in real life, it does work. So they tell me. We hear you've been shooting your mouth off about fixed fights. And our boss is Charlie Hunt. That's bad news for you, laddies. Careless talk cost lives. Very good. Nice. Fuck me with the that. Special one day all day. Thank you. Well done. No 
no one's going to thank me for saying this on film, but I'm saying it anyway, because this is my show and it ain't fucking going right. And I've just this second been told, there's like half an hour to go, and I've just been told the lighting jock's not turning up, the DVD player's gone. So, we'll see what happens in a minute. <laughs> um, fucking believable. Are you, what, have you delayed starting or something? Starting about a DVD and all that. Right. Is this going to be a regular thing now? Yeah. It's going to be every Sunday, every Saturday after. Absolutely. Right. That's what well, we're Then saying I'll leave here. these with you. Yeah. Um, thanks for all coming here today. I see there's all avid football fans who can't wait to get back and watch the old footy. Peter Gerald's here today. Um, dear friend of Lenny McLean's, the author of the book. And on the back of Peter's shirt, if I like to turn around, it says, Do you know who I am? Well, that is a very confident statement said by the, by the man himself, the governor. And, um, we now want to know who you are. I'm not going to be told by the film industry who's going to be in my film. I'm not going to be held to ransom for money. It's not a cheap way of making a film. Everyone's going to get paid, okay, even if you're an extra. And if you become one of the cast, then who knows what's going to happen after that. Yes, I've got a short list of directors at the moment. Yeah. <laughs> or a woman, even. <laughs> or a robot. <laughs> Well, there are some robots, some of the films I've seen, it must have had a robot directing it. But um, I'm not going to actually announce the director until September. There's lots of information to take on board now, and um, the director is shortlisted and has been approved by the financiers. I wonder who he has in mind. Yeah. I think it's... I think it's... Sort of running costs and um, just it, it's slower than normal you know like than it was expected perhaps what all-round nice guy peter's trying to say is that the tour has run into some financial difficulties and, um, what we need to and for the moment and then when touring the country the team come across a fellow doorman who may have shared some of the same yeah. opinions as lenny mclean you should have been here last night when i called a thief at the bottom of the stairs yeah coffee had to um do the take for the old bill and I said, well, let me look at it first. He went, why? I went, well, I slapped him. A couple of times I was at the bottom of the stairs. But he didn't see it because it was right by the doors. I went over the DJ booth and Nick, Nick the geezer's fucking box of records with his car keys and his phone in. And I just managed to catch him just before he went out the door at one of the exits. In headlock. <laughs> fucking thieving little cunt. He would, though. He deserved it, you know what I mean? Yeah. He deserved it. I didn't, like, punch him, just... I can teach him a lesson, he's only like 19, 20. Evening. Hi. I think Lenny would have done the same. <laughs> and from hard men to hard women. What are you doing in Bristol? I'm a, I'm a dog supervisor. She can say, I've got me badge here. So I'm just a box to it. I'll be fucking it. I'm like, ooh. I like that, right? And then I was with me, the paper said, I said, no, this is not brilliant. I said, what? You're fucking enjoying your game. I said, yeah, well, fuck it. And I run out, right? I got a bottle. I ran after the bastards, two of them, right? And the lad, I sleep into them. I said, I'll take your punish. You know what I mean? You never give in. Never. Like the fucking bull tell you, got a fight in you. Did you enjoy it as well? Um, I'm not going to stand with my fingers in me like a plum, you know what I mean? If somebody swings and punches me, I'll knock the fuckers out. My hard bastards. This gives you some idea of the type of character the teams were looking for in the audition. My name's Stephen Miller. I'm here to play Roy Shaw. I'm going to ask him to take his, uh, his, his top off. I'm going to ask him to do some shadow boxing in front of the camera. Yeah. That's basically what I need to know, because I know who he is. I've seen him fight. Yeah, I've right. seen him fight. Right. It's a no-brainer. Yeah. Okay, I walk in. He just comes straight in with Chemer in the gym. Yeah. Okay. You know who this is, don't you? Yeah. I'll do it as he goes. And your man wants to fight the governor. Yeah, why not? All right. Yeah. How much are you going to pull up? Five large. Go for that. Nice. Good. Yeah. Yeah, great. Great, sir. Well done, man. Thank you. Well done, yeah. thanks a lot. Nice one. Excellent. Fucking smart. That was good. Does he look like the real Benny? No, he's got to look close. The guy was six foot four and a mountain on a man. So, it's like, we had, this is a true story. I know a lot of colourful characters. Over the years, you get to meet a lot of colourful characters. And we had a, a right villain turn up, a blacked out cheap, heavy as a whole lot. He grabbed a 
a bag out the car, a hundred thousand pounds, I want to be Lenny. audition for Lenny McLean. Bloody hell Tone, cop a load of that. Do you see that Tone? Blondie just smiled at me. All right babe, what's your name? Can I pop it bum to mate, comes back? Okay, just need a chair in it. Yes, we'll come over. Usually we walk side by side along here, Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> No, you, 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 you go in front of me. And here's our Lenny from Cardiff. Is that all you fucking got? Is that it? Is that all you got? Who's the fucking daddy? Me! Is that all you got? Do you know who I am? You smashed me to bits when I was only a baby. Not once, not 20 times, hundreds of times, till I thought there was no other way to live. Who's the governor now? It's a trend for long in the tooth ex gangsters to write autobiographies on their lives. So, who's going to play Lenny then? Is it going to be that guy from EastEnders, Dan? Because he's been plugging it for years. He's, yeah, he was supposed to be doing it, but um, so then it was going to be Vinnie Jones. Um, it could John, be Jones wouldn't be right. Jones wouldn't be right. Might be you. Let's see it. <laughs> could be anyone. Though, maybe. A lot of bollocks got booked anyway. I didn't like it. Lies! Yeah. Him and, and Shorey, the boy, like the. Story's book is worse, but they're all good. Probably better than the second one. Oh, I did that! Oh, I got top of that cut. I haven't read it myself. Well, it's like anything else. If, if you were given 200 grand to write a book, they don't want to know about what you ate for breakfast today, so you have to. I understand that part of it. It's just that the, the exaggerations are. Courtney started it all off with his book. He, was, he, sh he must have shot about eight people in that book, and we all know he didn't. So, <laughs> but there you go. Basically, all of this will be a free bar for free girls. So all the girls for an whole hour will just be at this bar. For an hour? For a whole hour. Yeah. So I'll go and say, hey, look, get us a treat. Get us a treat. You wait till about 11 o'clock and we're all absolutely blabbed on free booze. This is just the kind of talent some members of the team are looking for. What time are we on? Um, well, we're on. Yeah, uh, well, on? on? <laughs> I don't know who you are. You keep coming to every fucking road show. <laughs> yeah, I do. Just go home, turn, turn it up, up get a life. <laughs> yeah, just turn up. Introduce me to something else tonight. Like, I don't know, the award winning trans fest guy. Good ideas. H from Steps. <laughs> He's coming tomorrow. It's Brian. It's his birthday. What about JT? No, JT, no, JT. No? Nope. Nope. What about Puff Daddy? No, Puffy's Puff going to come to Birmingham. Just Sorry to hear that Puffy could not make it at Birmingham, but perhaps next time he's in the UK, he might get time to drop in on Britain's number one warm-up act. He's all the way from the USA! Would you please welcome on Is there anyone he hasn't worked with? And I'm free from the Puff Daddy family! I just want you 
to enlarge tonight on stage. One, <laughs> yeah, one that I got yeah, carried, carried away with. Eminem. Yeah, one I got carried away with. I, I, I met him a couple of times, but I've never, I've never worked with him. That's right. All oh, right, I just want it for the record. Yeah, yeah. And I, yeah, for, the, for the record, I have not worked with Eminem, but. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And uh, just very quickly for the record as well, H from Steps. Was not there. Last <laughs> week. Right, yeah, was not there. Was not there. Yes, I know. Yeah, loads of phone calls going on, but what, what really happened? What do you mean, what really happened? Oh, where was he? He didn't turn up. <laughs> okay. Cream is just one of those people that is larger than life. He's great with the people, he's great in a club environment, and he just believes he is a superstar. Always get worried when Cream says, yeah, I've done the guest list, anybody new on on it? And he has a list of Cream's <laughs> other friends who did not turn up. 17 oh, pages dude. later. <laughs> Thanks, Cream. Yeah, Who's DT? Nice. From Pipe Piper. We're loving it, loving it, loving it. We're loving it like that. He never turns up. I know. Who's Stacy? No, thank you. Eros. No, not Stacy. Eros. <laughs> Who smoke, mate? Don't <laughs> The fat bird that strips. Yep. <laughs> Who's Saeed? Who's H? From Steps. Dave Courtney? CJ? Who's Anton? Pan kill. Damn cat. Damn cat. Sounds like a contraceptive. <laughs> Have you got your damn caps? Damn caps. Damn caps. You're a squid. You want to go get damn caps? I got a bag. It looks like these hopefuls get to see the producer give birth. Up in your legs, then. Do not take bribes. Done. Right. Ready. Let's go for it. Yeah. It's all going wrong. No, it's not. Calm down. It couldn't be better. Yeah. It's all gone wrong! No, it couldn't be better. One strong push. That's it. Oh, yeah. Your wife has given birth to a beautiful baby boy. Oh, no, dear. It couldn't be better, yeah? One more push. That's it. Your wife just given birth to a beautiful baby boy. Nice start. Nice start. Stop pushing. <laughs> right start. Good. Well, I can't have any more. Right. Whilst the film's being made, we're going to um, we're going to point score everybody, <coughs> and we're going to eventually find the UK's first ever film idol. And there will be one winner, and we will take that person around the world and hopefully enhance... So that's why they called it Film Idol. I'll tell you what, I'll get a couple of cards with my email number on, yeah. and uh, yeah. I'll get you to, if you send me an email with your registration yeah. number, because I've been doing I've been handing those out, it's just they're not in this pocket. Because if I, get, if, I, if I feel confident that people fit my, one of my profiles, yeah. or would be an extra or something like that, and I am handing out special little cards. So if you want to hang on for a second, because you've been very patient. With so many hopefuls fitting his profile, <laughs> no wonder he has no cards left. Emma. Emma. <laughs> Have you done any acting before? Um, we all attend Actor Science. It's the drama group oh, here really? in Birmingham. Oh, excellent. Um, they should tell me that on your emails as well. And I've auditioned for drama school this year as well. Yeah. Good stuff. Excellent. Yet again, hundreds of wannabe movie stars turn up to the auditions. Your sign all necessary for but this. finding the cast was proving difficult. Okay, chaps, hold him, hold him tight. Yeah, that's good. Thanks very much. Yeah, that's all we need for today. Thanks very much indeed. Bye. That was a bit nonchalant, wasn't it? I'll tell you what, if the doctor stuck a needle in like, like that in me, I'm... Huh? Devastated, wouldn't you? Right. You'll sign all necessary for this. Right, hold him. Come on, hold him tight. Can I just Jeez. ask something? I've read the book and um, 
I really would like to read for Kenny Mack. You don't fit the profile. Sorry? You don't fit the profile. I don't. No. I'm so, little. What are you up for? Kenny Mack. I've been told you that actually. Oh, well, that's all right then. That's good. Yeah. That's a good start. Yeah. I don't have too many Kenny Macks actually. Okay. No? No. Well, that's all I like to read, You do fit the profile. That's really. good. Good. Yeah. I'm well, good enough. Um, you want to do an audition for Kenny Mack? Really? Okay. Is okay. that a yes? Okay. How will I, how will I get? You'll get another message and you'll get another password and you do exactly the same again. Is this a promise? Yes. Yes? Yes. Look, I've been out of work for a year. I need some work. That's and, not why we give you the job. You know. That is not the way you I know. All right. right no, that's not the way you but that's said, how I feel. You've said the right things. But I want to get an audition. Kenny Mack is a good part and I can do it. Okay. There's been a few people that are very interested and well, they didn't know how to get on. They're desperate to act or to get into acting or any type of entertainment and they don't know where to go. And this is probably a very easy option for them. Look, I'm just absolutely desperate and just I don't even know the right doors to knock on, you know. So this is what I want really. Just a just a chance. It would mean a lot to me to be in the film because like say could lead to bigger and better things, couldn't it? And, and a movie of this magnitude, it's going to be big, isn't it? And to be a, a part of it, it would be, be fantastic. For somebody you could, well, your grandkids would be proud of, wouldn't it, in years to come? Don't fucking hit me, whatever you do. Get out of here, go on. Go on, fucking out of here. With so many hopes and dreams pinned on the search, I would not like to be on the receiving end of this guy if things went wrong. Well done, mate. Thank you very much, Steve. Yeah, thanks, Lynn. Very cool. See you again, hopefully. Yeah, you will. Patrick? I'm really not in the mood. Just had a meeting with Clinton. Stupid tosser. I'm supposed to be coming at half the money. Six weeks into it. Promises, promises, promises. He's coming up with a dough. Now he's saying the money's not coming till January. We finish August the 31st. Then we've got his auditions to actually get through. He's got no fucking money. He's looking for me to fund it. I ain't having it. Fucking piss. Oh, dear. The film crew have just heard that um, our wages might be put on a uh, IVA, which is a, a sort of bank thing that uh, will actually get paid once he sells his house. And in the Montague, he's um, he's going to be watching this for a start. No, he's not. Well, not not in the next well foreseeable future anyway. Not until he pays us twelve grand. <laughs> <laughs> and that is not. I, I think he's. Uh, You know, people say, is it a scam? Is it, is it this? Is it that? What is it all about? And I, I would say, if he's got as much sort of money as he's got enthusiasm, I've got no doubt a film will be made. I'll have to put right any slanderous remarks that are coming about Film Idol and the governor, because I've worked fucking hard on this project. And if I wanted to scam anybody, I would have called it fiddle.com, <laughs> not filmidol.com. <laughs> fucking laugh. I have here. Uh, all the paperwork we need him to sign for our bank manager to see so that he knows that we're getting paid some time. The IVA was for the sale of Clinton's house. Despite his commitment to the project, after only six weeks, he ran out of money. Patrick now had to take action, so he finances the rest of the tour. The show must go on. Things would now become frosty between the two. And it's like this, so we just like the background. That's good, excellent. And you the move. I come all the way from the Midlands for this uh, audition thing, you know. And he won't let me in because I'm dressed like this. You know, I mean, it seems a bit ridiculous to me. The kind of film you're making, you know, it's not exactly a... You know what I mean? I'm only just found out about the Cardiff one by coming to Bristol. I'm found out the two girls I've brought are too young to go into a nightclub. Yeah. They both work Saturday, well, one of them works Saturdays, so they can't and do a Sundays. Saturday and a Sunday, so we're knackered. And the actual oh. cutting from the Echo reads, turn up at the works nightclub. It's not our club and we we don't make the rules with them. I mean, it's said come back tomorrow, but I mean, I've got any, I'm going to gear with me, you know. I mean, living in the Midlands, it's about a four-hour trip. I've heard it's uh, something connected with James Bond, a James Bond film or something. 
so there's obviously a big glaring yeah. error here yeah, somewhere. Oh, 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 Ian McLean, is it? No, Lenny McLean. Lenny McLean, no. Um, Has he locked up? No, I haven't, no. So that's uh, film idol at its best. Uh, the local newspaper were a bit wrong. It seems there are all sorts of problems developing. At this point, who actually knew what was going on? Just been talking to the DJs. It's a garage R&B sort of crowd. It's a cream. Uh, last time we had one of them was Croydon. That's where Cream threw all his CDs out and they all came back. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> we shall see. We've got to do three shots, one after another. Super fast. Because it's Friday the 6th of June, it doesn't say Saturday the 7th of June, does it? Anywhere, at all. That's what's happened on all the clubs so far. So how do you think it's all going so far? Um, well, people are registering, so it's really trying to track down where they got the information from, really. I mean, we've been on the road about six weeks, and we're approaching 5,000 people. I mean, it's not bad. It's still the fastest um, growing talent register the film industry has introduced. And myself and Peter have been out on the road each weekend. A bit disappointed about the turn up. The, there seems to be a problem in the papers every single week. You know, turn the dialogue on, on the other guys and say, well, how would you feel if 20 people turned up for the nightclub? And um, there is just no advertising during the week, letting people know we're turning up during the day. It's not what Film is all about. Film Wonder is for everyone, and they should have been given the correct information. Who's with, with, who's with who then? I'm the manager here. Yeah. This is the BBC. The I'm Clinton. It's me, Dan. Hi, I'm Claire Banks from BBC Post. Hello, Claire. Hi Clinton there. Clinton you were one of the, the other governor. names yeah, mentioned on the press uh -huh. release. How you doing? How are you doing? This is looking really good. You yeah, just need people now. Yeah. Um, I'm just wondering, actually. Should yeah. we do Clinton, um, or do you prefer Patrick to do the interview for no, us? No, I'll do an interview with Phil Wilder and the Governor, Should definitely. Yeah. Hey, Patrick's not here today. Oh, right. Ah, so it was you they were talking about, was it, who was coming yeah. back? Ah, I right. do the daytimes, because yeah. I'm reaching out to the people yeah. on a personal level and making the film, so I actually will do, be doing the auditions. Bearing in mind the hero is from London, what are the chances of a Bristolian managing to get a part? Uh, very big to get a part, not necessarily as the lead, um, unless he can do a Cockney accent. Oi, you fucking fat bastard. That was low. Cool, Dad. Where'd you get all this stuff? 
Have you been practicing any cockney? Not cotton, no. No, 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 no fucking cotton, is it? <laughs> I'm like, up the, up the fucking road there. <laughs> Come on, mate, give me some credit. I ain't talking about steaming in. I've got a plan, see? Mm, okay. Hello, Uncle Jimmy. That's worse. <laughs> well done, George. Well, well done. Cheers, old boy. Arriving in Doncaster, Cream has to share with Mark in order to save money. His night with a groupie certainly looks unlikely. Little chef time or a big Michael's. Thank you. Car smells pleasant of stale cigarettes. Fantastic. Start smoking cream and make it smell fresh. Yeah, I will do. But here we are, this is how we live. <laughs> this stinks. <laughs> first, first class or first leisure all the way. <laughs> That's quite stale, isn't it? I like think it's the air stick, you can taste it. Later on, I will be shagging in this bed. It's just got to be all turned out of the bed, isn't it? I gave him the bed last time. Where were you then? Last the time, we were in a bed and no, breakfast. before that, I gave him no, no, Did I you have the bed last time? Before, didn't I? I said last time, I don't care. So tonight, tonight. what do you reckon? Uh, I think we're in for a good night, actually. Uh, probably about 1,400 in, 15. Which is a good response. It's usually in quite a female crowd, so <laughs> it's a tits out venue in this place. Is it really? Yeah. You actually get the tits out to get the tits out. Once again in Doncaster, we see what people, mainly the ladies, will do when you point a camera at them. Put, put a bottle of champagne in front of them, they'll do almost anything. Two bottles of champagne will do anything. I can't see where they could possibly feel that it could have gone wrong. Let's have the opening night in a nightclub with alcohol and expect it to run come back the following day. The road shows are not as full as we'd anticipated. So what we're doing now is we are changing our advertising campaign and we are focusing on um, local newspaper, new, local radio. That seems to be the key. Um, the flyers, I've seen it all before. When you flyers on cars, they get thrown in the fucking river. There's some... Um, Let's just follow the river for the moment. Perhaps if he was to divert some of that attention to the road shows. I would not do the road shows one person. My name's Clinton Montague. You don't know who I am. I'm a producer of The Governor. Well, basically, I mean, I size the tits up to start with, and as to whether I want to shag them or whether it's coming through, you know. <laughs> That's it, but that's, that's why I've written on my list here. Shaggable one to ten. Yes, the casting couch is well renowned in the seamy side of the film industry. All right, and I'm just going to be your patient. So we're going to get you to improvise. You can almost pretend that you know you're a professional doctor. You've got a, he's been shot in the bum, basically. Okay, so the, the conversation is almost secondary. Right. Okay, it can be as flirtatious or whatever. Throughout the audition, Clinton has applied an unusual technique. And he makes no exception for these ladies. Well, I must say, you offered them a rather large target. Come on, I'm suffering it. Oh, sorry. Right, the choice is yours. You can have me face up or face down. Should we get face down? Face up or face down. Where's your woman? I'm going to be letting you in. How can you have your arms in there if you're face up? Well, I think face down, definitely. Face down. No lies on the bed. There's bare ass in here. Oh. And the doctor says. I must say, you offered them a very large target. Okay. Whenever you're ready. And Whereabouts is it? And, um, <laughs> I'll find it. <laughs> <laughs> How many hands should you have? You've got to speak as well. You can live your life. Okay. I'll do face up. You've got really red, haven't you? I've got to go face up in a minute. That's okay. right. I need to get some thumb massage, which you can get. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't touch him, did you? I did. Go and wash your hands straight away. The team arrives at Atlantis in Bolton. So when was that cream? Once again, we were at Bolton. It's been a fortune on flyers. They get couriered 
And then 5,000 flies sit in the box that haven't been distributed. It seems Clinton has not sent out the daytime team to advertise the event. There you go. Well, it's just a waste of time and effort, isn't it? Can't you claim me enough money back? Obviously, you can't. Really. What do you think? What do you think it's going to be like? Shit. Do you? I'm well, pissed off already with yeah, the I flyers. Know. So, no, that's All right, so put that aside, though. I'm worried at the venue being so far out. Yeah. A bit like Reddy. Yeah. Very laid back attitude they, they've got there, which, which is nice in the way that they put the screen and put all the bits up yeah, and that yeah, sort yeah, of yeah. stuff. So. Yeah, but on a clientele yeah. basis, it's yeah. not, is it? Mr. Starmaker's on his way. <laughs> Here's some not so hidden talent. I talk to anybody. What's, the, what's wrong with that? What are you saying? <laughs> what are you trying to say? Not anybody. I'm going to get myself in trouble, aren't I? Oh. Good evening and welcome. We're coming live from Atlantis in Bolton. type of film these two would like to be in. As we can see, Cream is a real gentleman with the ladies. I wonder if they would succumb to his charms quite so easily if they were not paralytic. he won't stoop to. This is not the first complaint about cream. Yeah. I am up for a laugh, don't get me wrong. I am up for a laugh. But that weren't a laugh then. It weren't a laugh. Don't need like, he's damaged, he's damaged that. Damaged book, I've got the same thing. taught Cream how to text his own mobile. It's a cream suitcase. It was shortly after this that many celebrity models and singers started to contact him by text. Cream was bad last night. Yeah, Cost not bad as in good, as in bad. He's penalised 20 feet. Oh yeah, that's point. I went to uh, deduct that. How, how was your evening? Oh, the evening was great. It's just the morning after. <laughs> good morning, Pete. Good morning. It's just the morning after. So it's the worst thing is going to uh Have you made your mind up about Holly yet? Going to hotels. Holly Who Valance? the hell is Holly? What, 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 oh no. She texted you, didn't she? Yeah. 
Yes, we go to Marbella on the 26th. And you can't decide. Are you going or not? <coughs> 26th on the Tuesday. After... The 25th. Doncaster. <laughs> What are you looking for in these, um, in the female roles? In the female roles? Um, just absolute raunchiness, really. Come down and, and do whatever you're going to do and deliver your line whenever you're ready. OK? We're losing him. We're losing him. Good. Nice and vocal. OK, it's a panic, OK? You've just got a straight line on the machine. We're losing him! We're losing him. Good, well done. So they're all different. It's a very difficult decision, even for this. We're losing him. We are losing him. I bet trained actors couldn't do that. We're losing him. We're losing him. That was good. Well done. Am I dead? Yeah. yeah. Fantastic. <laughs> well done, everybody. Give a round of applause. <laughs> I had a little flutter anyway. <laughs> So even from that, it's very difficult for me to choose. You all came across very difficult, very different. OK? All wonderful people. And uh, we do everything we can to try and fit you in somewhere, OK? How are you, Claire? I'm good, man. I'm just a bit tired, but I'm good. I've been to Paris this week. Yeah, so I was there for two days, seeing some family over there. Hopefully I'll fly to LA next Wednesday. So I'm talk to a guy called Suge Knight, who's the owner of a record company called Death Row Records. And uh, he's very interested in signing me to Death Row. The team finds Cream's tall tales a little hard to swallow. <laughs> well, this is how we live, yo. Oh, I only another four people to pick up. <laughs> yeah, wait, I've turned the meter on already. <laughs> It gets a bit confusing. Which one is doing the audition? <laughs> <laughs> did, 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 did the guy actually bring his own gun? That's it. That's brilliant. And I slated him on the way in. That's the sort of person we actually quite like. You, you, you run off, yeah. OK, and obviously you don't think he's coming after you, then all of a sudden it's going to be like something out of Hollywood. Lenny's going to come fucking running, running, running around the corner and he would have got you on the floor, yeah. OK? And he would have taken the gun off you and he's going to make you say it, right. all right? Who fucking had you, me had you shot? Come on, it tell him! It was Billy Quinn! What we're going to do, we're actually going to adapt it. We're just going to get a little drill and various bits and actually make it fire bullets. So when the next person comes in to audition for Gunman, we're going to um, say you've got to point it at the guy with the cap on and then just pull the trigger. We'll be fine. Patrick is not too happy with Clinton. Um, and I'm not sure that who done it. So yeah, we, like, we <laughs> all of us did it. <laughs> this could be a who done it, couldn't it? <laughs> this could be the new Agatha yeah, the Christie. Of... And I'm sure he would be the victim. Maybe that's the film. Maybe this is the film. Maybe there is no film. Yeah. You've all yeah. been caught. Uh, it's a who done it. People are going to start getting popped off. Once again, next to them, you are favourite club in the whole. <laughs> Follow me and uh, mind the dead bodies. Due to Clinton's constant complaints about the lack of people turning up in the daytime, he is given the task of promoting a nighttime venue in Hull. Where are all the women? What sort of club is this? There's nobody in this club. This is the worst show that we've done. So we've crossed the halfway line. We've done about 20 shows, we've come to Hull, I was really excited. I've come with you guys, the crew, to support everybody. I've gone on stage and there's like there's no one out there. Okay, the DVD, the sound system shit, okay, everything's shit. This is what this club is. This is what this club is. It is a fucking toilet. Okay, there's no Andy Miller. Andy Miller doesn't turn up in Doncaster, he doesn't turn up in Hull, he decides to turn up wherever he wants. We've spoken to the management, no one even fucking knows we're supposed to turn up tomorrow for a road show. So if they think I was born yesterday, they want to read my resume. My name's Clinton Montague, I've been in the business 20 fucking years. If they want me to help run their nightclub, I will. In the meantime, I'm going to do Phil my door, I'm going to fucking take it somewhere else. I don't know what he's talking about, it's not that bad. I've seen worse toilets. 
yeah, we've got a week off next week. So, uh, see you in two weeks' time. Uh, but a week off means possible change, as in we might not come back. Uh, if we don't get paid this week, then I can't see any point in us carrying, continuing on with this endeavour. So, no one knows I'm coming to you. They do! Find me a manager. 5,000 flyers tell them that they do. Find me a manager that knows I'm coming Viking back. radio station tells them Where's that the they do. Station? Who went on Viking radio? I went on Viking radio. You went on and I went on. I didn't go on Viking radio. You station. did go on Viking. Not for her. You did. No. I'm telling you, you did. CJP told me you went on Viking. That was for Doncaster. Don't ever do that again. Doesn't matter how much I like you. You're not allowed to do that. Viking. That was. That was. <laughs> now, I actually come up and do a presentation during the day. The next day. Are you aware of that? Yeah, I am. Yeah. I'm okay. here for that tomorrow. So. You are. Yes. Okay. Well, it looks like we're going to do it then. <laughs> we put a little bet on. Right. Someone told me you weren't aware of it. Yeah, we are. Well, we got a bet on. Neil said seven. James says eight. I say nine. People are going to turn up. We're giving out 5,000 flyers. It's a really disappointing evening. Let's see if they can make up it in numbers during the day. Okay? Looks like we've got to come to the road show. Patrick, are you going to come to the road show tomorrow? Yeah, Patrick's going to come as well. Fantastic. It's going to be a great road show now. Yeah, great. Well, you sure? If you get stopped and arrested, you drive, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> Was that the CD we used on stage? Look at that. Look at that. It looks like someone's lent it to James. Scratched. What happened to your mate that, that first started doing the cameras? Chris. Chris. Yeah. Oh, he's still up for it. Just, I don't want to use it until we know we're getting paid. Yeah. But he, we're still having fun. He's like, like professional. He's but you're professional. <laughs> he's a real kid. Yeah. Yeah. We're already involved. <laughs> yeah. Where should you find him then? We've, we've never seen him. Where should find Steve? How much are you owed anyway? Down Riley's. Oh, about 15 grand. About 15 grand? That's yeah. just us. Is that all? That's all. That's, 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 that's the cameras. I want to know how much I'm owed. Yeah. Not to blow that out, and I'm not going to tell you by what. 45. I'm owed a few quid. As you all witnessed last night, um, Patrick and Cream and all that, they were going to come along to their first ever roadshow, um, Film Idol. And uh, looks like we've been led up the garden path. I've got a message here from Cream. Had to leave with Pat. Speak later, buddy. Remember, we're out later. Hello? Pat just can go fair. Yeah, I just forget it. And I didn't even want to do the fucking road show. There's no, there's no one's going to turn up. I, 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 I was only going to do the road show because you were all coming. I was, I was going to go. I just, I just don't understand. I bet he doesn't even remember saying he was coming, does he? No. Oh, I don't want to put you on the spot. I'll see you later. All right. Bye. I don't like to be in this position of, you know, there's so much more that can be done. You know, there's no representation from CJP, there's no representation from First Stage. Okay, the manager's opened up. You know, we've been here 10 minutes, he still hasn't had a chat with us. You know, we're just wandering around like lost souls, really. Cream, how come, like, apart from every fourth week, right, you have a lot of fun. You say this tour's wicked, this is fucking it, this is not us, but I wouldn't have done it for, for 50 nothing. pound a show. You know, I just, I just wouldn't but, have done. Because I, I can't I can't even break even with that. On the shit that I've got to pay for at the house. It's one night. What do you mean? It's like what what do you what do you I make more on the doll than that? <laughs> yeah, but you're on that as well, so No, I'm not on it. No, no. <laughs> Put me on it. Just think, just think. I had what? to come off that. Why? What do you mean why? Why did you have to come off it? I had to come off it. They fucking caught me out on the on the my answer phone. You're kidding. 
dates. Oh, oh 100%, man. Shit, man. Fucking 100%. Shit, you says all the dates where he's going. Yeah. Fucking hell. Even though I said you're getting and I've, I've got I've got a big fine because of it as well. Can't you black that? I've got that? a £600 pound fine because of it. Can't you black that? Can't you just say no. for business reasons when people are ringing you and look like you're busy? Nah, you got to use this reasons. I'm not supposed to be in business, you fucker! I'm <laughs> supposed to be at the door! That's what I'm saying. What do you like? You've got no work, so you got to make how you're doing something. No, right. I just said I'm doing it for nothing. I'm just, it's part of my work experiences, my portfolio. Your yeah, work experience. Yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, that used to be a big fucking star, man. I can't believe all this shit. <laughs> There's nothing worse than tabloid envy. Fucking customer, what? He's a friend of yours. You got him in the paper. Lovely. Fantastic. I didn't even get him in the paper. He got himself in the paper. I'm working with you. I'm not in a fucking paper. Patrick, you keep on telling me you've got to remind me. You've got to remind me. Got, I've got to remind you about hotels. I've got to no, remind no. you about fucking uh, Keith, Keith Bishop. You know, uh, the fucking record company. That doesn't even fucking exist. What well, record company doesn't exist? Fucking Sanctuary Records coming to see me. They're not gonna come and see me. Fuck. So. He's he's had all the ammunition. He's had fucking CDs. Yeah, he's but, had all the information. Yeah, but, Green, I ain't being funny, right? When your name goes to the papers, no one knows who the fuck you are, right? The PR is if I can get Keith to do it, he's doing it on my account. Not on your account, not because he thinks he's going to make some great bucks out of you. This is a film idol tour. Yeah, you warm up the fucking the film, film idol, idol tour. tour, right? Yeah. It's like you are not the film idol tour. You're not cream on tour. You're not. It's none of it. It's like that is that. What do you mean I'm not cream on tour? Of course it's. I'm, I'm on the tour. Think what you think. Fine. And so he continues into the night. I haven't got a pot to piss in, I haven't got a car anymore, I haven't got a driving license, I need to find 145 pounds for, for my um, drink drive thing. Patrick drowns cream sorrows for him. I haven't even got that. <laughs> no, it's really razor blades. Shut up, I'm in the back. Oh, right? Oh, I am actually, yeah. I'm tired. It's, it's been two years in the making and it's been a constant tour for th since April, so... April, May, June, July, August, October. We're nearly November, so we're like nearly eight months now. And um, it's been tiring, but the good thing is we've worked with some terrific people and we've worked with some absolute tossers. And you know who you are. And I will name and shame as well. By the end of the week, I will name and shame. But I'm looking forward to actually, what, what we all set out to do was actually get a database up and running, get everybody, get the whole tour around the UK, get everybody onto the database, match them with the character profiles of the film, get them to an audition, whittle them down, and find the full 86 cuts. Mr. Wood characters. Can you sing? No, I'm afraid I can't. Play piano. Go on then. <laughs> Give me a Musical genius. Vinnie Jones is a football. He's not a fucking fighter. Oh, fighting tour. There's been some good faces. You can just see they're, they're the type of people we're looking for. Um, particularly one I've just spoken to. Uh, Brilliant, so I've got a really good chance then. Yes, Deb getting stopped in the airport because it looked like Ronnie Biggs. I'd better get to mobile phone, and I? There you go. Right, and if there's a, a part for a tart for the heart, you know, I'll get Chrissy to come down to it. Yes, indeed, sir. Captain Beattie from Planet Venus. 
Nice to meet you. Ready to be here. <laughs> Great gun. You've been zapped down early, haven't you? Hey, All Matt. my girls over there. It's going to be the Hello. Honestly, there are, there's going to be loads of extras. Yeah, there's yeah. walk on, walk on. Hello. It's still based in London. It's based in London, so. I'm wondering if I'm any use to you. No doubt you'll tell me when it's time to settle off. Um, I have a significant knowledge of psychology. Yeah, just get it nice, yeah? Do I look all right on the camera? <laughs> yeah. And you got a thing so I can see what I look like. You can pull something out. Uh, no, not on this camera. Shit. Oh, and when I go out, do I take my mobile with me all the time or what? Uh, it's not a bad idea. That's why it's called mobile. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Shake this man's hand. This is Peter Gerald. He wrote The Governor. Number one bestseller. Pleased to meet you. Oh, pleased to meet you. Yeah, you're just a man from some, some point in the film. Thank you very much. I'm looking yeah. forward to that. We look forward to seeing you. It's quite exciting that well, after all this and all the ups and downs that we had along the way, they're actually going to end up with a cast of 86, which hopefully next Saturday we'll be having a party <laughs> at Clinton's house. After a very fraught eight-month tour, the team are relieved to be off the road. We can't show you the sheer elation the people who were cast felt, as they were all notified by text. To celebrate the completion of the tour, the cast were treated to a party at Clinton's country house. And as one last gesture, Patrick paid for it. Well, you've all met me before, OK? You haven't met each other before. This is an opportunity today to meet the cast of The Governor. OK, this might be a little bit corny, um, but I'd actually like to, for everyone to give themselves a round of applause. I'm telling you now, okay? So, uh, please give yourself a round of applause. <laughs> You've all met me when you, did, when you did your auditions, okay? And I introduced myself as the director of the film. Yes, I've got a short list of directors at the moment, but um, I'm not going to actually announce the director until September. Okay, and I introduced myself as the director of the film, okay? And it's important for me to find the right people to play the right characters. OK, we found our Lenny. OK, there was only one Lenny McLean. No calls now, I'll call them back. All right? Darren Juniper, I'd like Darren to come forward. OK? Get me in the ring and with I'd like you to call him. Him. Oh, oh, him. Him. Okay. Is that all you've got? For getting the opportunity, even to just go and audition for the part, was uh, meant a lot to me. Um, Although when I first found out about it, I'm, it was hard to believe um, that it, it was all going to happen, you know, because of the industry I've been in, in the music industry, you hear lots of talk, talk's cheap. Yeah. Um, meet a lot of people over the years who say they can do things and don't. And uh, to be honest with you, at first I, I sort of kind of took it with a, a pinch of salt. And we got Val, and I'd like Val to come forward, Emma Wells, okay? They only fell in love at a very early age, as did Val, and they had two beautiful children. How did you feel when you were told you had the part? Well, I couldn't believe it. I just kept saying over and over again, are you sure, are you sure? And after about 30 seconds, then I just burst out crying. I'd like, you to, I'd like to now just turn my attention to myself as producer of the film, OK? The producer's job is to pull every ingredient together and that's including myself, the director, so I stand in front of the mirror and tell myself what to do. It's very important this afternoon, I'd like you just chill out, make yourself at home in my house, and in introduce yourself as to as many people as you can, because you're going to see them all again on location, on set, OK, and then obviously again this time next year at the premiere. So we've got the governor first, OK, we're going to just make a film like any other film. Now we've got our cast, everything will now become quite filmy. OK, pre-production, all the scheduling and all that sort of stuff which you may or may not be familiar with. And then behind the scenes we've got Film Idol. It's never, ever been done before to this scale. And we'll do everything we can to open doors for you all around the industry, all over the world. All right, so again, I'd just like to thank you very much. Stay as long as you want, OK? Enjoy the food and drink. I'd like to just say a few thank yous. I'd like to say thank you to Patrick, who's my partner in Film Idol. Where's Patrick? Okay. Patrick decides to stay in the background. It's been a really long journey. We've been formulating Film Idol for over a year and a half. Okay, I've personally been working on the governor for over three years. Okay, so it really does mean a lot to both of us. Okay, that's it for me. Has anybody got any questions now? Go ahead. Yeah. The Lou? Can you hear me? Yes, you all hear me? Yes. Right, I know, I know the producer's been standing here thanking all of us. 
I think we need to thank him for picking us for the film. Yeah. So I need to give a two cheers. I came back from holiday last week and about one o'clock in the morning, come indoors, and my boy got up, a 16 year old son, got he said, Dad, come and have a look at this. I said, no, I said, uh, I'll, sit, I'll sit in the morning, son, I said, I'm tired. He said, Dad, come and have a look. So he's got it up on the internet, and I said, yeah, there, congratulations. I've, I've just phoned everyone up. We met, I said, I've got a part, Billy Quinn. <laughs> yeah, superb. Push. Oh, you fat bastard. That's well low. Come on, you baby, you're a fucking little tap out of Derby, won't you? Come on, let's fucking nah, have it. Piss off. Throwing your weight around. Since I got this part, I just dream about it. I wake up and I think about it, and I'm so proud. It's like a dream. I thought, oh, wow, they're actually making the film. This is great. So I uh, just sort of read about the whole process, which I found quite strange and different, or unique, if you like. And uh, I thought, well, is this, is this for real or what? You'd think there'd be a few established actors to help people like myself and everybody else in the room, because we've never done anything like this before. Pleased to be here today? I'm very pleased, yes, thank you. You didn't get the part you originally auditioned for. A Lenny, no. Lenny. But, uh... I'm, I'm not too worried about that. It was quite daunting, but it was a lot of fun uh, just doing the dialogue for Lenny. I really enjoyed that, and uh, hopefully that will stand me in good stead for Bill the Shoe Shop Manager. Because we've got a little Lenny at yes, and then a Lenny. Well, it's quite interesting because this scene appears to be when he's about 19, 20 when he first meets Val, so I'm wondering yes. how now I'm going to be able to play that. Well, but you can worry about it's going to have to be with a wig, isn't it? So. Yeah, yeah. Well, we, we need to, we need to, we need to, um, we need to concern ourselves with that more than you. How do you feel the whole search of Phil Mudler has gone? I think it's been a fantastic success. Just to walk around today seeing these people. He's like, he's brought the book alive, for me anyway. So who are you? I'm oh, fucking Lenny McLean, yeah. I'm the fucking I'm worse than the Let's hope for Clinton's sake, nothing goes wrong. As thanks to Patrick, these two men and the rest of the 86 cast know where Clinton lives. I'm gonna go and get this. All my cast here has now been done before. Okay, 86 people, not quite 86. Do we have to make up the numbers here? This is just amazing. It's just amazing. It's a dream come true for me and for a lot of people. Okay, we've got Lenny, we've got Val, we've got Jack Briggs, we've got Kenny Mack, we've got all the people we want here. Find Me a Star delivered the 86 talented cast and 2,000 film extras to Clinton. Could Cream have finally signed that record deal? I would say there was over a hundred girls on that tour that I actually slept with. Being on the Film Idol tour did take me away from other commitments that I was supposed to have with um, certain celebrity females, um, such as Charlotte Church and Holly Valance. Um, so just some people that I've met at parties and, um, you know, you put two and two together and you come up with your four. And um, they were they were texting me and calling me on the tour and trying to find out when I was coming off this tour so that I could go and party with them. We've had Snoop Dogg in the, in the bus. Um, we've had Joss Stone. Um, we've had Amy Winehouse. Um, a lot of actors as well. We've had Val Kilmer in the bus. Patrick Swayze was in the bus a couple of weeks ago. And um, when they see that it's me that's driving, it's, it's, it's quite a turnaround because normally I would be driven and now I'm driving them. So, but it's a lot of fun. We had all the lights on in the bus. Patrick's going flat in the bus. Give an audience information. I ain't being funny, right? No one knows who the fuck you are, right? I gotta get on, feed me pigeons. Patrick Barber owns and operates Find Me a Star Limited, which is still the fastest growing online casting database. The film industry itself 
is somewhat a scan in inverted commas because there's a lot of time wasters out there there's a lot of people that say they can finance films there's a lot of production companies that say they're making films and they're not there's people that invite people down to auditions for films that never get made there's people that put advertising advertisements out for films in PCR and Screen International for films they get sent all their resumes now that's costing people time and money you know and I think that's a waste of time in 2004, only 28 feature films were produced in the United Kingdom. The governor was not one of these. The cast are still waiting for production to commence. I've raised the money, 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 money. The money's in the bank, the bank, the bank, the bank, the bank. And now I'm going to cast the film, 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 film. With my hand way up your skirt, now lay back and think of me getting real freaky with your body. I know you have me before, oh, you know what please. I mean. Do you like that, baby? Oh, yeah, cream. <laughs> cream. He's been kidnapped, by the way. Yeah, it's a ransom of 20,000 pounds. So, I hope he's got some clean pants with him because I haven't got 20 pounds. 20 pounds, is it? No, 20,000 pounds. Well, we're all aware of that now. Yes. Hello. Are you going to put his pepper in again? I'm just a film producer, director. What do I know? We've interviewed so, four so girls so far. What have you produced and directed before then? Um, I've produced two beautiful children and I had a job directing the traffic ones. <laughs> I got the sack from that. I haven't got a clue if Cream has ever made a record or done anything within the music industry, but he's a good crack. Clinton in the street, punch him. He'll know why. <laughs> <laughs>